Welcome back. This is part two of basic sensitometry. Today we're going to look at gamma. There are several different ways to measure the contrast on your H and D curves. Today we're just going to look at gamma, which is a measure of the contrast on the straight line portion of the curve only. So it ignores the shoulder and ignores the toe. So we're going to choose any two points on that straight line and name them A and B. So you're going to see that in just a moment when we look at my curves. Now you can compare the contrast or the gamma in this case between two different films, the same film with two different developers, which is what we're going to look at in just a moment, or the same film, same developer, at different development times. And that can kind of show you how things are being affected. So let's go ahead and look at those curves and see what happens. So gamma is a measure of our straight line. It does not take into consideration the toe or the shoulder. It's only a measure of straight line. So the formula is very straightforward. It is density B minus density A divided by log exposure B minus log exposure A. Very straightforward. So we have our two points A and B on the straight line. So let's go ahead and see what those densities are. So A is 0.63, so 0 0.63, oops, that is our A, let's mark that out. So we'll start over up here, 0 0.63 from point B at the top, which is... 1.86, we're gonna divide that by the densities at these points. So density B is 2.72, and we're gonna subtract from that density A, which is 1.23. So let's do the math here. 1.86 minus 0.63, that's 1.23. 2.72 minus 1.23 is 1.49. So that means our gamma for this particular curve, which was plus X in D23 developed for 12 minutes, is 1.23 divided by 1.49. That's a gamma of 0.83. So we can then compare that to other film. Let's take a look at plus X in D76. So this is a curve of D76 uh, stock for whatever time Kodak recommends. I don't remember what it is. It's fairly short though, if I remember, something like five or six minutes. So let's see what the gamma is compared with that, since it's the same film, but different developer. So again, we're going to choose two parts on the straight line of the curve, and we're going to check the difference. So looking at the straight line, I feel like this is a good part for A, and before we get to the shoulder, this looks like a good point for B. So let's get our densities. Looks like it's 0.62 for, nope, I take that back. 
that's not A. A is doo -doo 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 -doo, 0.54. So 0.54, which we'll be subtracting from the density of B, which is 1.26. 0.26. And then we're going to divide that by our exposures, just like before. So that is 1.46 and what is that? 2.62. Ooh, 2.62, 1.46. See, it's the whole backwards thing that gets me every time because it's B before A. All right, so you gotta be careful of that. All right, let's see what our gamma is there. So 1.26 minus 0.54 is 0.72 and 2.62 minus 1.46 equals 1.16. So that's going to give us a gamma of 0.72 divided by 1.16. 0 0.62. So we have a much lower gamma for plus x in D76 than we do for plus x in D23. However, D23 was developed for 12 minutes. There is no published time. Where did I get 12 minutes from? Well, uh, the darkroom cookbook, without regard to what film was used, recommends 12 minutes if you mix up the formula. Not having anything different. I know there's a mass development chart, but I don't like the mass development chart for my own personal reasons. <clears throat> I developed it for 12 minutes to see what it would do. Um, so I get a gamma that is much higher. Does that mean I overdevelop the film? Potentially, who knows? But this is the gamma that I get. So 0 0.83 and gamma is kind of a Y shape. So gamma here is 0 0.83 and the Y shape is 0. 6, 2. So that's my gamma for each one. And there we can see the effect of two different developers on the same film. Now the D76 is developed exactly to the time that Kodak recommends. The D23, not so much could be because I don't have a time from Kodak for that film and developer combination. What I have is a recommendation from the Darkroom Cookbook, which I think is probably a little too aggressive for that film. I think bringing that back maybe down from 12 minutes as recommended in the book to maybe, uh, I don't know, nine minutes would do a better job. But it does show us how things are affected. So uh, if you are looking to compare these things, that's the simple formula to do it not a difficult way, and you can go from there. So get out, shoot some film, measure the contrast if you need to, and we'll see you next time.